Our scripture reading this morning comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with the 14th verse. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Back in May, when I first met with the search committee, I asked them what they thought my job would be if I came here. Like almost every search committee, they had a general idea, but nothing concise or succinct, nothing you could nail them down to. I think that's probably good because most search committees are the same way. I think what it does is it lets them keep their options open. On the other hand, I have a fairly decent description of what my job is. It occurs to me that you might actually want to know what that is. What it is that I think I do as the pastor of a congregation. Well, first and foremost, I answer to Jesus Christ. Secondarily, I answer to the elders. If on some occasion, Jesus and the elders disagree, I will side with Jesus. The elders may choose to send me outdoors, but that is their business. It has never happened to me yet, and I hope it never does. Amen. <laughs> Especially since y'all own the house now. <laughs> It is my job to comfort the disconsolate and discomfort the comfortable. I know some of you have, have a grasp of big words. What that means is that those who have lost a loved one to divorce or to death or have for some other reason are just desperate and in need of comfort, it is my job to be the one that brings the comfort of the Holy Spirit to them. On the other hand, those who have got comfortable in their roles as Christians or church members, those, especially those who have set up their easy chairs in their positions in church life and have set back and are now taking it easy, it is my job to kick them out of their comfort zones and to challenge their ideas of what they do as Christians and what Christian living means altogether. I say all that to say this. No matter what people want to hear, we should stick to what God has to say and never ever get caught up in people pleasing. People pleasing is easy to get caught up in. In our search for growth, as a congregation and as individuals. We are liable to have to change some things. We are in the congregation and in our personal presentations, we are liable to have to present the gospel in fresh new ways. The message stays the same, but the presentation gets a new package. We 
may have to sing some different songs, both as individuals and as a congregation, we may have to start doing some things in completely different ways. But none of that compromises the message that God has given us to carry. Sometimes, however, through the course of history, the church has decided that it should change the gospel, the message of God, to suit itself. And I see something go. Your heads came up. <coughs> you know why? You don't know when the church would have done such a thing? Or why? Well, I can tell you that partly that's because we Americans are victims of a changed gospel. We grew up with a changed gospel. And I can say that because just think about this. If you went up to most any American today, churchgoer or not, and you asked them, what does it mean to be a Christian? The answer you are most likely to get goes like this. Accept Jesus as Savior and go to church on Sunday. Sometimes the answer will be so will be even shorter, get saved and go to church. Well, for far too many people, you know, there's more to it than that. For far too many people, there is no sense of any change in life. There is no sense that we are supposed to be developing a spiritual relationship with God. And there is almost never any clue that there is any difference between a good American citizen and a Christian. I knew a fellow, Jewish as he could be. For some reason, he came in contract with the business contact with the businessman, and he didn't. Ah, it was a car thing. Needed his car fixed. But for some reason, the guy decided he was a good guy and he was going to let him fix the car and only pay him about half of what he owed him. He was from out of town or whatever. And he says, well, I know you're a good Christian fellow. You'll, make, you'll get back to me. Jewish! <laughs> but because you look like a good guy, you're a good Christian fellow in this country. Not true. There is a difference between being an American citizen and a Christian. We have itched in our ears for a message that spelled out an easy path to salvation and to Christianity. We have wanted a broad and level road, paved with no challenges, no deep thinking, no spiritual commitment, and absolutely no requirement that we ever do anything we don't want to do. The church cannot call us to do something we don't want to do. Now, can it? What happens, I don't know what happens in Kansas, but I know what happens in Kentucky when basketball <coughs> starts, church better be over at quarter to twelve because they're going to fill Rupp Arena at noon. And the game comes on in every part of the state. You better have them home if you want to keep your job. <laughs>